Right, so here's a simple tutorial on how to make this squash and stretch animation in Blender. So we're going to be doing something like this. So the object starts from the left and gathers some energy and then moves across to the other side where it remains for a while and then it gets back. So let's get started. I'm just gonna start a new file by hitting file and new and going to general. And right now I'm not gonna save this. So yeah, the first thing we should add a keyframe for this cube. So we're gonna get started with the basic cube. And in the 3D view, you can move around by holding down your middle mouse button, so the scroll wheel. If you hold it down, you can uh, rotate around your selected object. And if you hold down shift while you do it, you can pan. So you can move in a more two-dimensional way if you hold down your left shift or right shift for that matter. It doesn't matter which one. So uh, let's give this cube a keyframe first. Uh, actually, let's let's pull this um, panel up. So here's the timeline for our animation and we want it to be 60 frames for this one. So here it says start, it starts at frame one, and we're gonna end at frame 60. So I type 60 there and hit enter, then I get a timeline length of 60 frames. And I can also use my middle mouse button to navigate here. If I hold it down and move my mouse, I can uh, move the view of the timeline to the middle. And then I can, of course, zoom in on it by scrolling. All right, so we need the first keyframe. It's going to be um, frame five in this case. So let's put the first keyframe in frame five. Uh, having the cube selected, uh, I just moved uh, with my arrow keys here on the timeline to frame number five. You can also use this thing here. So you can type in your frame or you can use the arrows to move to the frame you need. You can also drag your mouse over here to change the frame of the current frame. Um, and yeah, so we're just gonna add a keyframe now. I'm gonna hit I as in internet to add a keyframe. So while hovering over the 3D view, I'm going to press I. And what I need, I'm going to need um, location keyframe. So this is the initial location of the cube. So it's going to start here. And you can see that this turns yellow or orange here. It means that it's keyframed the location of the object. So it's in the object data and there's a keyframe, but there's nothing on the timeline except you can really, well, if you hold your middle mouse button down and drag up and down, you can probably get the keyframe showing up. And uh, next frame would be the ending frame on the other side. So First, we gotta move on the timeline to the frame number, and then we can move the object. Always remember this. If you move the object now, if I would move it by pressing G once, and then, for example, pressing Y to lock it on the Y axis, and move it here and click. Then if I would move on the timeline, it would reset to the point 
where the last keyframe was. So you're going to remember that first move on the timeline, then move your object and then set a keyframe. So, all right, I'm going to move to frame um, 22. And I'm going to move the cube by pressing G once and Y once. I'm going to move it here and click. And then I'm going to press I to set a location keyframe. All right. So now we got the motion already here that it's, um, it's moving across along the Y axis. And then we want the uh, cube to remain there for a while. So a few frames um, until frame 38. So frame 38, uh, I'm going to hover my mouse over 3D view again and press I and click on location. And now the timeline, you can see there's a orange stripe between these keyframes, meaning that there are no changes happening to the object. It remains the same throughout these frames. So that's what that means. And then the last frame for uh, location, that will be 36. No, sorry, 53. So frame 53, we're back uh, in the same position as this frame. So what we could do is select this keyframe by clicking it and make sure no, no other keyframes are orange. So clicking on this should make only this keyframe orange. And then I'm going to hold down shift and press D. So shift D once, and then I'm going to move my mouse. And this is going to duplicate the keyframe. So I'm going to put it in frame 53. And now if I hit my space bar to play the animation, I can see it moves across to the other side, waits a bit, and then it moves back. So that's the location animation we want. That's all good. Now, to convey the idea of energy uh, in the object, and emphasizing more the motion, we need some squash and stretch on this object. So what we could do uh, first, first off here, we could set a keyframe for the very first frame. So I'm going to hover my mouse over here and press I. And now I'm going to choose lock scale, which means that it uh, saves the keyframe with the information of the location of the object and the scaling of the object. So I'm going to click that. And now you can see it saved the scaling data as well. All right, so we want to create the illusion that it's gaining up energy before moving across. And the way to do that, we go to frame three and scale it on the Y axis. So I'm going to hit S to scale the object. And then I'm going to lock the Y axis by hitting Y once like so. So there we have it. It's, it's now scaled on the Y axis and we might also want to move it on the Y axis a bit. So I'm going to hit G and Y just so it looks like it's gathering energy and anticipating the next move by moving, uh, squashing back. So one more thing I could do is think about the mass. So I only scaled it on the Y axis, but I could also scale it on uh, upwards on the other axes. So I could hit S and hold down shift and press Y 
then it's going to scale on the uh, z and x axes. So I could make the cube appear a bit bigger on these axes. So it looks like it doesn't lose mass. So it just gathers energy by squashing itself. I'm going to click here and hit I to add a keyframe and choose lock scale. All right. So now we have it. The cube is gathering up energy and over here it starts to move. Actually, what we could do here. Oh yeah, yeah, it's all right. Mm, in the middle of the transition to the other side, we should have it stretch. So I'm going to scale it on the Y axis by hitting S and Y and click in. And then I'm going to hit shift excuse me, I'm going to hit S and shift Y and scale it on the X and Z axes. So we have it more narrow. And now I'm going to add a keyframe. And I'm just going to add scaling now because we don't need the location. It's already moving. And it's where it should be. So I'm going to add scaling there. So now it's stretching out nicely and when it stops here it needs to squash so maybe move this keyframe to 14 yeah and um, frame 27 we're gonna Actually, yeah, in frame 22, it should squash already. So I'm just going to squash it by hitting S and Y. And then S and Shift Y. And then add a keyframe by pressing I and choosing scaling. All right, so now it's moving across, then it needs to take its initial form, which is the cube. And it's going to take about five frames here. So let's go to 27. And we can uh, reset the scaling of the cube by hitting Alt, Alt S. So now the scaling is set to 111 on each axis. And I can hit I add a scaling keyframe. So yeah, returns to its original form. Okay, so the next frame um, would be uh, 34. Just gonna add a, maybe a log scale keyframe here. And in um, 36 it's going to do the same as in the beginning because it's going to move back it's going to take in some energy and get going so i'm going to move it by pressing g and y bit on the y axis and scale it on the y axis like so and scale it again on all the other axes except y and then add log scale keyframe here. So then, of course, we need to stretch it again, maybe frame 44. I'm going to scale it on the Y axis and scale it on all the other axes except Y. And insert the keyframe, just scaling here. Okay, we're almost done. So we just gotta squash it here again when it gets back to the original position. 
So I just want to scale it on the y axis and scale it on x and z. All right, so insert keyframe scaling and let's go to frame 58 and hit Alt S. And insert the keyframe scaling. Let's see now. Okay, so we can see our cube is now nicely packing up energy and moving across and squashing while arriving and then packing up energy again, stretching along the way and squashing in the other end. So that's how you do it. That's fairly simple. Uh, if you want to get more technical and advanced, you can also check this graph editor out. So you, you got these graphs, uh, basically Bezier curves that Blender makes for all of your keyframes. If you want to adjust like some little details of the movement, you should do it here. And you can, for example, make, make it... Um, make the cube move a bit faster to its destination or slower. So yeah, the graph editor is uh, way more complex to use than the dope sheet, but it affords you more flexibility on adjusting the fine details of the movement. So for example, if you check these um, attributes here, you got the location data, you got a curve for each one, and then, then it's highlighted when you click it here, Then you got the scaling data here. So you could go for example, let's see, Y scaling is this one. So if I adjust this curve, uh, I can also move the keyframe up. So it would stretch out more. You see the verticality um, translates to the amount of stretch here. And if I put it there, it's going to behave again totally differently. So you can make some interesting movement with these graphs quite easily. And you should experiment using this because you can end up with some happy accidents. The while also fine-tuning your animation.